Hi, welcome back to the UTA Electrical Engineering Soldering Series. In this video, we will use our skills built in the Solder Basics video in order to complete a solder practice board, the SPB-2 from Electronics Express. To complete this project, you'll need a soldering iron, a sponge, a 1.2 millimeter and 2.29 millimeter screwdriver type iron tips, some solder, ESD tweezers, wire cutters, a small fan, ESD wrist strap, and a 9 volt battery. Let's go ahead and open the kit and see what's inside. The PCB or printed circuit board is usually made out of fiberglass and epoxy. The green layer on the back is called masking. The masking is non-conductive and applied over the PCB traces to help protect the board from short circuits. The openings in the masking allow you to reach the component pads for soldering. The dark green lines are copper traces connecting the components under the masking. Some of the components have a polarity, meaning they have a particular direction you have to install them in. The electrolytic capacitor has a polarity. The short lead is negative and the long lead is positive. The negative side is also marked on the case. The LEDs are similar to the capacitor. Short lead is negative and the long lead is positive. If the leads are trimmed already, there is still a way to tell. The cathode side will have a straight edge on the rim of the plastic case. There are two different diodes in this kit. Both have a ring around the end that indicates the cathode, or the negative side. Use a magnifying glass to read the part number on the case to identify them. The PN2222 transistor fits in the PCB as shown. The emitter, base, and collector are labeled on the PCB. The ICs do have an orientation, but you will not solder the IC chips directly to the board. Instead, you'll solder IC sockets that offer a convenient way to replace the ICs. The IC sockets do not have an electrical polarity, but the notch should line up with the outline on the PCB. This way there's no confusion in which way the ICs need to go. The 9 volt battery clip has a standard red to positive and black to negative connection to the PCB. Use the resistor color code chart in the documentation to determine the values of the resistors. Notice one of the 100 ohm resistors is larger than the others. Its larger size allows heat to dissipate faster and hence can withstand a higher current and wattage. This 100 ohm half watt resistor is R3. The electrolytic capacitor's value is labeled on the case. The non-polarized ceramic capacitor has 103 printed on it. The first two numbers indicate the first two digits. The third number indicates the multiplier. So this cap has a value of 10,000 pico, 10 nano, or 0.01 microfarad. Cap values are always in picofarad unless otherwise indicated. When you install the LEDs, make sure you have the correct orientation and only solder one pad at first. Then pick up the PCB and place your finger on the LED. Reheat the solder joint on the LED and push the LED flat against the board. Now that the LED is flat, solder the other LED lead. You will also need to re-solder the first lead to make a good solder joint. When you install the IC sockets, make sure you have the correct orientation and hold the socket with your finger and turn the PCB over. You will need to bend two diagonal pins down so the socket does not fall out. Because of the smaller pin and pad size, you will use the 1.2 millimeter screwdriver type iron tip to solder the IC sockets. Apply a small amount of solder to the two diagonal pins and check that the socket is flat against the board. If it is not, hold the PCB in your hand with one finger pushing on the socket while you reheat the diagonal solder joints. The socket should lie flat against the PCB. Then you'll solder all the socket pins and re-solder the two diagonal pins. After you finish soldering the PCB, you'll need to install the ICs. Most ICs are ESD or 
electrostatic discharge sensitive. Before you remove the ICs from their ESD safe foam, you'll need to discharge any static you may have built up. Put on the ESD wrist strap and make sure it's snug against your wrist. Plug it into the ESD tester to verify you're grounded. Plug the wrist strap into a convenient plug on the bench. Line up the chip indentation with the IC socket indentation. When installing the ICs, insert one side into the IC socket and push horizontally until the other leads line up with the sockets. Then press down firmly to install the ICs. After soldering all the components and installing the ICs, plug in a 9 volt battery. Assuming everything was soldered correctly and the components are not defective, your solder project should scroll the LEDs like this. If it doesn't, check for solder bridges and incomplete solder joints using a magnifying glass.